I have to work today, so this guy is going to hang out with his best friend, Pollyanna, and he just won't leave me alone because he's so super excited he can't wait to go. Can ya? You can't wait to get out of here. Well, buddy, you're about to get your wish because I got to go film a vlog today before I go to work. So this is your jaw portion of the vlog. Days with Jordan the Lion getting started right now. A little boring today. We'll go with a flat black shirt. And my flat black Calvin Klein suede shoes because I'm going to wear them for work and they're super comfortable. I'm pretty baller looking. Well, I just dropped off over at Sam Tripoli's house and now I'm going to go over to Beachwood Antiques and the guy who owns it, Jeff, is going to show us some pretty awesome stuff. I feel like I'm doing like a uh, Huel Hauser and Mr. Mr. Rogers episode, but really this is going to be awesome. I want you guys to see who's performing at the Hollywood Bowl tonight, even though I can't go. Looks like she might be playing tomorrow, too. I definitely wouldn't, uh, wouldn't scoff at going to see Dolly Parton, that's for sure. Maybe I can make that happen somehow. I was driving up here yesterday afternoon, and I noticed this out of the corner of my eye. There's a monastery up here, and they have, like, a big replica of the, uh, the Jesus that they have up in, uh, South America. You see that up there? It's like a praying center up there, and I tried, they have kind of some walkways into it, but they had a lot of no trespassing signs, so I really couldn't get an opportunity to uh, get anywhere near it, but it's still pretty cool that it's in my neighborhood. They were back in uh, Beachwood Canyon. This is what we called Hollywood Land, and I did a little bit of uh, snooping around when I left here yesterday, because since I'm gonna be going into the antique store today, the guy who runs it told me he had done a few little like web series episodes about his store. You can find it on YouTube under Hollywood Trades. One of the things that he seems to really know a lot about is this area's history. And what he said was that these, if you look at a lot of houses in this neighborhood, they were all built to look like um, European houses. He said this was one of the original communities of Hollywood and it was made to resemble living in Europe. That's why there was so much stone. And if you remember when we were walking around yesterday, those we would go around those turns and it was the same kind of stone. So I'm actually thinking of maybe asking this guy if he would be interested in doing a history of Hollywood land or Beachwood Canyon episode with me because he seems to know a lot. Now when Hollywood Land was kind of started, it was a lot of actors lived here, like the famous actors of the day. That's pretty cool. A lot of the famous actors of the day, but also people that worked in the industry in various aspects, like the uh, art people and just people who didn't really want to live close to the city. Here's Hollywood Land Realty. This is one of the original establishments. You could tell it's definitely got a European vibe as well as this building and all of that. This is how cool this place is if you're ever looking for something to do. Friday nights, 5 to 7, food and drink while browsing, 20% off. Pointed out that that was Bella Lugosi's house. And he lived up here. Wow. Alright, let's check out all the great stuff that Jeff has here. That is Peg Entwistle, the actress who is known, primarily known for uh, jumping off the Hollywood sign to her death. But she was actually, they say, uh, the inspiration for Betty Davis to become an actress. She saw Peg Entwistle act on uh, New York stage. Most everything he has in here is autographed. Groucho Marx. Colleen Moore. Dorothy Moore. I absolutely love, I think this is probably the best antique store I've ever been in by far, especially for my interests.
Carolina Dietrich. What are some of your favorite pieces here, Jeff? I really like this, even though it's... The Valentino? It's secretary signed, but in his lifetime, which is pretty remarkable. Yeah. And then if you look up here, kind of hard to see that it's signed, but um, that's, uh, what's her name? Um, Agnes Ayers, who's wow. co-starred with him in The Sheik. Of course, WC Fields. Yeah, awesome. that was one of the first things that caught my eye in here. And Mary Davies had a situation. Uh, I was sitting on the bench, uh, just reading the paper one morning, quiet morning, and all of a sudden this big limo whipped around, you turned, parked in front of the shop. Driver jumped out, opened the door. This tall, like, stately woman got out wearing this long sort of house coat dress or you know very like colorful and she breezes right past me and so I get up and say you know can I help you and you know she seemed like she was on a mission and uh, she's like well I read about you in a book and I wanted to come see your shop and I'm in town on business do you have anything of Marion Davies I said well uh, no not currently but do you mind me asking why you're interested in yeah. babies, and she says she was my grandfather's mistress. And wow. The Hearst of course. And wow. So she bought a plaster cactus and a few other things, and uh, <laughs> I haven't seen her since. Now, one of the great things that uh, that blew my mind when I was in here yesterday was you showed me that you have some personal items of Harold Lloyd's. Yeah. Would you mind showing us, or would you like to show us? Um, yes, I think I'll pull it out. That's an original. Other than just having some of the most amazing autographs you can ever find. I mean, Paul Newman, Harpo. He also has a pretty amazing vintage collection of watches. That original Tom Sawyer. This is some of the greatest stuff I've ever seen, what you showed me yesterday. There's a platinum, diamond, all the way around. Pocket watch, made by Vacheron Constantine, with a platinum fob locket, which would have attached with a gold chair, a platinum chain. Both monogrammed HCL. HCL would be Harold Clayton Lloyd. And when we open the fob locket, we have two miniature portraits on ivory, hand painted of Mildred Davis and Harold's firstborn daughter. Wow. You don't see many of those. No. Wow. I mean, that's the earliest days of slapstick right there. That's Yeah, this would date to about 1925 probably. Wow. You, this shop is no joke. He has everything. Anything you could want. Look at that. A telegram to Sandy Davis Jr. From Ronald Reagan. A 
And then he also has a signed picture from Nancy and Mom. Remind me to ask what the significance of these shoes is. And you can just look around here for days. This is this is by far the coolest store I found in this area. Pretty amazing assortment of the Mickey Mouse watches. Oh wow, I love that Mad Magazine watch. That's great. Take a look at all these amazing watches. Okay, so yeah, um, so when we went, went by here earlier, I wanted to make a note to come back and ask about these shoes, and I'm glad I did. Florence Ziegfeld tuxedo shoes. If you've never seen the Ziegfeld Follies movie or, or the Great Ziegfeld with William Powell, definitely watch that. Wow, that is so cool. Costume for years as a costumer, and um, 
after he passed away, his widow gathered up all his wardrobe and donated it all to Western Costume. Really? She was able to, with permission, take those out. She also gave me a, a single shoe that belonged to Mae West. Really? Um, and it was a custom made high heel shoe with an additional like, three or four inch platform. She wow. She was to stand on apple crates to make herself right. Uh, the right height. So she would do that. And uh, uh, that's how she. Uh, would do her uh, two shot scenes with wow. co-stars. What I get a kick out of, I just finished restoring this great old watch. Wow. Mechanical Roadrunner watch in the 60s. How often do you get stuff to come in here that just kind of blows your mind? Is there ever, is it? I mean, it... there's mind blowing stuff. You know, you never know when it's going to come in. Yeah. It comes in, and that's kind of what keeps you opening the front door and waiting. And you've but, been here uh, 20 years, you said. I mean, I pretty much get something in the shop every day. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I, I watched, uh, I was telling them on, on the vlog here that you did your own kind of web series about the store, and um, you had one of Frank Sinatra's tuxedos in here that you were able to get to an actor who does a lot of Frank Sinatra impersonating. Yes. And he met Roger Moore, and Roger Moore kind of verified that that was his tuxedo. Yes. Because it was Roger Moore who showed Frank Sinatra his tailor, and that yes. was the same tailor, right? Uh, Frank Sinatra had bumped into Roger Moore and admired his tuxedo, and Roger said, well, you must go to my tailor. And uh, I forget the tailor's name. Uh, Somebody out of London. It was London. Um, and so, yeah, when he saw the tuxedo, he verified it. I love the fact that you made sure it got into the hands of somebody who truly appreciated it. Yeah, I mean that's sort of the sort of what I enjoy doing. Uh, that not every dealer will make the extra yeah. You, and you did an episode where you had a Hirschfeld here of um, Charlie Chaplin, and there was a little boy who was a big Charlie Chaplin fan, and you yeah. you you were able to well, kind of boy, wheel and deal with his mom. That little boy's name was uh, Boulevard. Oh, and really? Since, uh, appearing in our show, which is the first thing he'd ever done, I've seen him in about three commercials on TV. So awesome. I think we'll, uh, we'll see a lot more of Young Boulevard. That's great. He'll probably have that. I'm, well, I'm sure he'll have that the rest of his life. Yes. This is something I find fascinating, too. Ancient antiquities. Um, years ago, I bought a collection of identified Roman coins. And so I keep an eye out for Roman artifacts. And this came up in an auction recently. And it's uh, bronze and iron. And I believe an eating utensil, uh, approximately first century AD. Wow. Look at the detail on that. That part's bronze. You can see the green patina. Yeah. That's incredible. How long have you had that? Um, I bought it brand new. Wow. I'm kidding. That would make no, I mean, me I mean, you, years old. You've had it, re I mean. Uh, for... I've probably had it a couple months. Wow. Yeah. I want to put it in a nice shadow box and figure out a good way to do it. Yeah, that's beautiful. You, you truly have probably the best store I've ever been in. <laughs> without a doubt. And I go in, I go in so many stores wherever I go in the country and this is by far the one that I would spend every penny I had if I were well, able to. I told that to my friend right behind you. This is the guy, kind of guy that you want to support. He has quality stuff. 
historical memorabilia that you just cannot find anywhere else. And those are the kind of people you want to spend your money on. Those are the kind of stores that you want to make sure to stick around. I mean, I honestly could stay in there and, and like, if I had two hours, I could just ask that guy questions. What's this? What's this? What's this? I didn't even have really, you know, like I'm kind of on a shortened uh, schedule today because I have to go to work. I couldn't really ask him every single thing I wanted because he's running a business, but just like those shoes, I saw those shoes and he was dealing with a customer and I thought, I just, I'm curious what the deal is with those shoes and I'm glad I asked because I'm a huge William Powell fan. He started in the great Ziegfeld, he played Flo Ziegfeld. So to me, that, that was one of those things that really um, made me happy to see. So I hope you guys love that vlog. Um, you can check him out online. Uh, like I said, go to YouTube, look up Hollywood Trades, uh, Hollywood Land Trades, and um, yeah, have fun. Enjoy his store. I'm sorry, I keep calling it Beachwood Antiques. It's not Beachwood Antiques, it's Hollywood Land Antiques, but it's on Beachwood, so I just, I wanted to keep reiterating that so that you can find it because Beachwood is not a place that you're gonna stumble upon that store unless you live in that neighborhood or somebody directs you to go out there.